Hello, Ayan. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. How are you, dear? Good, sir. Ayan, uh, you come from Bhopal, Madhya Pradesh. Yes, sir. I am uh, currently living in Bhopal. Okay, and your optional subject is mathematics. Yes, sir. You have graduated in electrical engineering from IIT Delhi. And uh, yes, sir. This is your which attempt, dear? A second attempt, sir. Second attempt, first interview. Yes, sir. First interview, and uh, your hobby is bullet chess, bug house. Okay. Yes, sir. These are variants of chess, sir. Okay, nine sixty. Okay, got it. Ayan, suppose I am. Visiting Madhya Pradesh, then highlight three such areas where I should visit, uh, where people generally do not go, but these places are worth visiting. Uh, sir, uh, some of, among some of these are lesser known uh, excellent spots to go. Uh, sir, Rajgarh Fort is one of them. Uh, it is less known, but it is quite a beautiful site. Uh, sir, in Jabalpur, uh, Tilwara Ghat is there. Uh, it is uh, a bit famous, but uh, not too many people go there. Uh, in Bhopal, sir, uh, Bhojpur Temple is quite a sight. It is uh, mm -hmm. again among famous, but uh, not as famous as Sanchi or uh, Bhimbetka. Mm -hmm. uh, sir, in uh, Bhopal itself, uh, Taj Mahal Palace would be another sight, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, how how Bhopal gets its name? Uh, sir, uh, Bhopal was earlier called Bhoj Tal, which uh, Tal means lake and Bhoj refers to Raja Bhoja. So, sir, Bhoj Tal meant the uh, city of lakes created by Raja Bhoj. Do you have any knowledge about the administrative policies of Raja Bhoj? Uh, sorry, sir, I have not gone into it. Any specific work he has done with respect to irrigation? Uh, sir, may I take a guess? Yes, go on. Uh, sir, I believe uh, his construction of artificial lakes was for the purpose of uh, irrigation along with uh, water supply. Okay. Who is the Raja Bhoj of South India? Uh, sir, uh, may I take uh, an informed guess? Sir? Yes, uh, please go on. Sir, I would guess it to be uh, Krishna Dev Raya. And why is he the Raja Bhoj of South India? Uh, sir, uh, Raja Bhoja was a very prominent king and uh, one of his specialties was he was also called Kaviraj because of his literary, literary works. Similarly, uh, Raja Krishnadev Raya was also well known for these. Sir. Hmm. Are they both philosopher kings? Sorry, sir? Are they both philosopher kings? Uh, sorry, sir, I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, why did you choose mathematics as your optional? What was the motivation? Uh, sir, I had analyzed the past year's scores and the subjects of mathematics. So I felt I would be able to do best in this. Mm -hmm. Any other reason? Uh, sir, the primary reason was uh, the marks that I could secure. Because I believe that even if it costs me extra effort, but I am able to work hard and obtain higher marks, it would be the right decision. Okay. Uh, why Indian Foreign Service is so low on your order of preference? Uh, sir, it is on a fifth position. Uh, sir, this is a, it is definitely a service I would uh, be happy to join. I felt I would be able to do better in India given the uh, familiarity I have with India, as well as the domains such as education and health, which I'm interested in working in. Hence, sir, I put administrative service and police service, etc. above it. Okay. Uh, then why income tax, IRS income tax and IRS central excise, they are above Indian foreign service. I understand the reason for IS and IPS being put above IFS, but then why IRS, IT and Central excise above IFS? Uh, sir, I uh, would not uh, call it as choosing one service over the other. 
but uh, rather simply as a matter of uh, preference i would definitely be happy with all the services but sir uh, given the choice i decided this to be slightly more suitable to me sir what is the difference between embassy and high commission uh sorry sir i do not know exact about high commission okay what is an embassy uh sir an embassy is an office that a country has in a foreign country to maintain diplomatic relations and for all coordination purposes okay any specific is officer whom you admire uh sir i have heard about uh, is harshika singh uh, who is an mp cadre is Uh, she has done uh, immense amount of work for a uh, tribal population and tribal education in particular sir i mm. was uh, really inspired by how much tangible work she had done and mm. i i would also aspire to create a similar model if i get into service sir okay uh mp is a state which has a substantial tribal population can you yeah. highlight three schemes which are presently in operation these schemes could be government of madhya pradesh scheme or government of india schemes which are helping in the skill development of the tribals located in madhya pradesh uh sir uh, one is the scheme for eklavya model residential schools hmm uh, another sir is a uh, stand up india for empowerment of uh, tribal populations good uh, sir in madhya pradesh we also have a uh, cm rice schools which uh, mm. which have a uh, quite uh, one aspect of which is to focus on empowering tribal children for education mm. but this this an the third one is not a skill development scheme uh, uh, sorry sir It's more uh, sir, of a it, nutritional security Uh, sir, it involves uh, education as uh, schools are being built under the CM Rice scheme, sir. Okay. Define entrepreneurship. Uh, sir, entrepreneurship is a form of a uh, business or uh, business or activity where a person starts a new business by themselves rather than joining a com- company. They start a new venture on their own, sir. Okay. Uh, why India is producing so many entrepreneurs now and these entrepreneurs were not there say 15 years ago but today you see that uh, almost everyone is talking about startup how this startup revolution it started in india uh, sir i would say a few reasons first i would say sir is the success stories of many startups we have uh, seen startups become unicorns in a very few years uh, second sir i would say that overall the facilitative environment even in colleges sir now we have dedicated startup cells and uh, the compliances are simplified third sir i would say government policies also for example sir startup india is there we have a uh, sir startup summits and investor meets uh, sir investments have hence uh, risen and this is getting uh, giving support to such startups sir. all of these have promoted startups and entrepreneurships suppose you are an is officer and you have been posted to a remote district where people generally have this feeling that females should not be educated and uh, they are better in homes and they should be kept away from schools now government has launched several educational programs but these programs remain only in paper you have been appointed as the new district collector in that district now highlight three immediate steps that you would take and these steps should not go beyond 6 months in any way uh sir i believe my primary focus in this regard would be to create an attitudinal shift uh first sir i would uh, try to bring in successful women who have uh, pursued education and uh, revolutionized not only their families but also their districts especially sir if uh, such women uh, examples of people from uh, poor districts then it would create a strong influence on the remote districts sir 
सेकेंड सर आई वुड ट्राई टू ब्रिंग इन एनजीओ एंड सिविल सोसाइटी टू कंडक्ट वर्कशॉप वेर द पावर ऑफ एजुकेशन इज शोन इट इज शोन हाउ इजिली एजुकेशन कैन चेंज लाइफ इन पर्टिक्युलर हाउ एजुकेटिंग द गर्ल चाइल्ड कैन हेल्प थर्ड सर आई वुड ट्राई टू कंडक्ट सम वोकेशनल वर्कशॉप अगेन परहेप्स बाय द हेल्प ऑफ एजुकेशनल एनजीओ और विद एग्जिस्टिंग स्कूल सो हेज टू प्रोवाइड सम बेसिक लेवल ऑफ एजुकेशन एंड वोकेशनल ट्रेनिंग टू द गर्ल चिल्ड्रेन Uh, that would sir empower the families to see the effect education and training has on girl child and overall uh, growth for the family also sir. okay ayan what is the exact meaning of your name uh, sir it means eternal happiness okay tell me a word which has the exact opposite meaning uh sir uh, in essence sadness is uh, on those lines i'm not able to think of exact opposite sorry sir okay i like one commonality between the indian idea of a state and the western idea of a state and one distinguishing factor that separates indian notion of statehood from western notion of statehood one commonality and one difference uh sir uh, if i may sir first answer point of difference uh, sir in india we have a center at a slightly higher position than states and power is devolved to the states so there is federal supremacy whereas in west sir states tend to be more important more have more authority and uh, the federal government is facilitative in nature uh, so sir in india the states have relatively less power and position compared to the west uh, in commonality sir i would say that uh, for both india and the west states form a subdivision of the larger identity of nation and the overall loyalty and identity goes to the nation first sir mm. for you west means united states of america or does that uh, also sorry, include sir? for you west does that word indicates only towards united states of america or it also includes canada uh very sorry sir i uh, answer keeping in mind united states uh sir i am not uh, very familiar with other countries but in uh, canada mm. model is very similar to india sir mm. okay thank you ayan thank you sir ayan can you hear me yes sir good evening sir good evening dear what is the difference between good afternoon and good evening Uh, sir good afternoon is used usually from 12 pm to around 4 or 5 pm and uh, good evening is uh, used from 4 or 5 pm till after sir okay because of first panelist you said good afternoon now you are saying good evening very sorry oh. sir <laughs> okay okay ayan uh, you know your date of birth we just talked about 9th of uh, october Am I right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. What is this day celebrated worldwide as? Uh, sir, uh, worldwide, I am not sure. Uh, I know about uh, certain personalities, and for India, it has a lot of significance. Tell me, uh, sir. For India, one sir, it is celebrated as the Foreign Service Day because the IFS was established on this day. Uh, sir, uh, from personalities' point of view. so the famous singer john lennon was born on 9th october uh, and a famous chess player wesley so was also born on 9th october sir do you have any idea whether uh, this day celebrated uh, as the world post day yes sir sorry sir i i am aware yes sir you recollect yes sir the international postal union was established on this day good okay uh I am. I am a little surprised to see your death. You've done uh, your uh, B Tech in Electrical Engineering from uh, IIT Delhi. Your yes. Sir. Academic performance has been superb all through in your school as well as in your B Tech. 
so why do you want our country to lose a good uh, engineer and uh, go into the civil services don't you think you have a beautiful and excellent career in the corporate world waiting for you uh, sir i would not think of it as a loss to the country at all sir uh, sir regarding engineering our honorable director at college on the very first day said that uh, engineering at iit is not about electrical or mechanical but rather about solving society's problems in that regard sir i believe i am doing exactly what engineering sought to do in the first place uh, moreover sir by uh, serving as an administrator i will be able to contribute to society in an excellent way uh, regarding career sir i believe nowadays civil services itself is an excellent career in terms of uh, monetary benefits career progression diversity of profiles so sir it is not a lose out for me in any okay good uh, you have uh, been a member of the nss uh, in school uh, in college is it no oh, sorry in college yes sir okay uh, tell me uh, ayan what is the motto of uh, nss and what is the symbol of the nss and what does it uh, signify sir the motto is not me but you uh, so the logo is a circular wheel with spokes and colors are red and blue sir the spoke is inspired by the giant wheel rut in konar uh, the blue color sir signifies uh, regarding how in uh, the planet earth is a very small aspect of the cosmos similarly nss is a small aspect of society and it's trying to do its part the red color signifies the youth and energy that other volunteers have good excellent uh, what exactly was the aim of the nss when it was established Uh, sir there are uh, primarily two aims one is sir for the personality development of youth via such social activities second sir to instill a feeling of uh, social service as well as nationalism within the youth the added bonus sir is the service that we provide to society via the volunteers okay tell me uh, say three other services uh, uh, that uh, the nss uh, does uh, so, three sorry, other activities sir, uh, three other activities three activities that the nss uh, does in pursuance of this particular goal yes uh, sir one example is uh, teaching of underprivileged children or preparing them for exams like je second sir is organizing a health camp such as we work with ngo blood connect for blood donation uh, third is uh, sir taking care of animals also for example there is a project called friend ecos at nss united okay uh, what is it uh, that will help you in performance of your duties of all the learnings that you have had from the nss uh, yes sir i would believe there is a immense correlation between my experience in nss uh, sir both as volunteer i have served in nss which has taught me that my actions will have a huge impact on the people and that by understanding people's problems i can solve them much better as a project in charge at nss also sir i have realized that the existing projects can further be streamlined perhaps by identifying the flaws and working proactively with the people this will help me in administration sir good uh, you are you have also participated in the national uh, chess championship why did you not think of making uh, chess as your uh, career uh, sir the next national chess championship was an inter school event Uh, sir uh, i do enjoy playing in, uh, playing chess and have uh, moved quite forward in it but uh, one reason sir is that i am not uh, quite that good at chess as of now uh, so it may not be a viable career option for me secondly sir i was more attracted towards civil services uh, owing to its career opportunities as well as the meaningfulness sir okay can you tell can you name three main variants of chess though you said the other uh, names that you have mentioned are also different variants but what are the three main variants of chess internationally followed yes sir uh, sir uh, one is standard also called classical second is a blitz and third is rapid and uh, what is the main difference between all these three uh, sir the main difference in these three is the time control so a uh, blitz is between 3 minutes and 10 minutes rapid is 10 minutes and uh, approximately 25 or 30 minutes and classical refers to the longer matches you mean uh, 10 minutes to 30 minutes uh, per move Ah uh, no, sir. Sorry, sir. Total time. This is sir. 
Okay, one last question, Ayan. Uh, if uh, you were to advise me to visit uh, Jabalpur, which three places would you recommend that I should visit uh, in Jabalpur and why? Uh, sir, the first place would definitely be Bheda Ghat Marble Rocks, which is a, a very pleasant site, sir. It is a very good environment. Second, sir, would be Dhuanadar Falls, uh, which uh, by River Narmada. Third, sir, would be the Chausat Yogini Temple. All of these are, sir, marvelous tourism sites, which are very fun and very enjoyable. Sir. And uh, what about the Balancing Rock? Yes, sir. The Balancing Rock is uh, quite a wonder, sir. It is a, a very puzzling thing how the rocks are balanced with very little contact. Thank you very much, Ayan. Thank you, sir. And <clears throat> could you hear me? Yes, sir. Good evening, sir. So your uh, option is maths, mathematics. Yes, sir. Can you list three major breakthroughs in mathematics, recent breakthroughs in mathematics? Uh, sir, first I would say is that uh, Fermat's last theorem was proof, which is a millennium problem. Okay. Uh, second, sir, I would say that uh, solutions have been given for the Riemann hypothesis, although they are still under peer review, sir. Third? Uh, sir, uh, third, it, uh, I, I'm not sure if this counts as a breakthrough, sir. Uh, Vedic mathematics uh, achievement, sir, one was that recently a person memorized a 32-digit number in four seconds. Good. But what about Ramsey theory? Uh, sorry, sir, I will have to read about it. In chess, you have interest in chess. There's a young grand grandmaster in India who has defeated the world champion thrice. Who is that grandmaster and what is his world, world rank? It is in rapid chess. Uh, sir, uh as of now, sir, multiple of our young grandmasters have defeated uh, the Magnus Carlsen, the uh, highest rated. Uh, sir, one is uh, Doma Raju Bukesh. Okay. Uh, Pragnanda, uh, Pragnanda has also defeated Magnus Carlsen, sir. And uh, Arjun Erigaisi has also defeated Magnus Carlsen. No, there is one grandmaster who has defeated Ma uh, Magnus Carlsen three times in a row. He started at 10 years. At 10 years, he has defeated and then continually, continuously has defeated Magnus Carlsen in three, three times in a row. Who is that gunmaster? Uh, sorry, sir. I am not aware of the exact. It is R. Pragrananda. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It is often said that our country is like some families where the money is with the husband and the wife has to manage the household. States have very little resources or money of their own. What are the recommendations of 14th and 15th Finance Commission? In very brief, two points, about devolution of funds from the center to the states. Uh, sir, uh, first point I remember is uh, regarding the amount of devolution was uh, 42% and 41% respectively from the net proceeds. Yes. Uh, second, sir, income distance has been made a criteria uh, which seeks to promote equity. So, sir, uh, states having lower income will be given more devolution, sir. Okay. Thank you. And can you hear me? Sorry, sir. Can you hear me, Ayan? Uh, sorry, sir. Am I audible to you? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. Uh, Ayan, uh, just a couple of questions before we end this interaction. Uh, and if, suppose, you have all the power in the world to cause one basic change, what that change would be?
सॉरी सर कुड आई सीक अ क्लैरिफिकेशन सर डू आई गेट टू अप्लाई इट इन अ वेरी स्पेसिफिक मैनर टू प्रिवेंट क्राइम प्रिवेंट नेगेटिव थिंग यू कैन यूटिलाइज दैट पावर इन एनी वे पॉसिबल बट आई एम जस्ट से you would like to cause one change or you would one like to change. change something you may even uh, engender something which do not exist or you may prevent something that exist uh sir uh, one change i feel is i would uh, like to eradicate poverty i would like to that is by ensuring that no one is dying of hunger no one is suffering in a uh, very uh, in a uh, dearth of resources and in human in human conditions sir okay uh, now try to highlight a quote that summarizes your personality and if there exists none frame one uh, sorry sir could i request you to repeat that yes uh, i'm i was asking try to frame a quote that summarizes quote, your a quotation that quote, would right, yes. that would summarize your personality a quotation frame one from your side uh sir uh, one quotation that is coming to my mind right now sir you can turn off the sun but i am still going to shine uh, sir this talks about persistence and about how we have to find solutions irrespective of what the problem is i also try to do the same sir irrespective of what the situation is i try is this to your focus quote? on the solution is this no, your quote so i asked specifically that you frame one quote for yourself a oh, very sorry sir i misheard sir uh sir i have in the past uh, framed one simple quote mm. is better and better always uh sir the choice of words is deliberate uh, sir it is to indicate my attempt to always improve myself in every way not only occasionally but all the time to find my weaknesses to improve my personality my strengths and to improve myself holistically okay. thank you ayan your interview is over we will reconnect with you in some time for your feedback stay connected hello ayan am i audible to you yes sir ayan uh, let me highlight the good things first about your interview you are very polite you speak very well you can articulate your arguments properly you can carry forward your point of view very appropriately you present your thoughts in a balanced way so all these things are already in place you are very young you have graduated from iit so all these things are going in your favor some of your answers were very good and some of them were excellent but i am not highlighting now anything that is good because this is a critical analysis and i want to talk more about the areas where you need improvement got yes. it because the good things will remain good anyhow so yes need not worry about that and i felt that you are showing a kind of anxiety in answering especially when you were yes. aware about the topic areas of the def which you have prepared well when questions were created around those topics you were too eager to answer this shows that you are not uh, manufacturing your answers at that moment but you are importing them already you have made your answers and it's ready made yes. you are just importing them whereas when you were not prepared on a particular topic you took a long pause often without asking for a permission whenever you pause for thinking you must ask for permission yes got it whenever a new information is supplied to you you must thank the board and suppose you say that you are not aware about a particular topic yet the board member keeps on pushing that topic forward the idea is not to check your knowledge but to check your personality how do you respond under stress see ayan the entire idea of having this exercise is to check your personality 
and to ensure that whether you are suitable for the civil services or not are you a good problem solver a decision maker especially under stress do you have a balanced world view or you are biased prejudiced have a stereotypical approach towards life are you inclusive do you believe in democratic values how much you respect the constitution what kind of values you hold for yourself are you punctual do you have belief in the system all these things is what upsc is interested in and let me tell you that uh, at this moment you are placed very nicely so whatever we say today the good things that should not be a cause for your complacency yes you should ensure that you should be at the top of your game for that day also you appeared very honest that's a very big thing when sir asked you why you want to go into the civil services the reasons that you gave seemed very practical got it so yes be, stick to those real reasons because you see the experience of the board members may be more than your age yes so do not try to uh, fool them in any way mm -hmm. so say the right thing and to the full capacity means there should be integrity in your answers there should not be any kind of cooked up things uh yes. why have you filled the fifth uh, your uh, zone 4 as your fifth choice it means the northeastern zone of india why that is last in your order of preference uh sir it is simply based on my familiarity with the different states uh, sir i would definitely be happy to go to northeast as well hmm so you see that uh, can you speak odia no sir but then if i go by that logic familiarity then zone 2 is your second zone of preference and odisha is one of the states in zone 2 so that's not a good answer okay yes do you understand that better answer would be i have just exercised my preference because upsc gave me an opportunity this is one of the preference that i could think of at that moment though there were multiple preferences but close it by the statement that you just said that i would be more than willing to serve anywhere in the country yes. also and i feel that you have not shaved today this yes, is sorry sir a full dress rehearsal so you should take it very seriously uh these yes, mock sir. interviews create uh, that environment where you are put into that right head space so that yes. you are mentally prepared for that big day got it so take these exercises with full seriousness your answer yes. uh, around why ifs is the fifth choice was not satisfactory work on that answer got yes. it because I, but with your logic is and ips why they are above ifs was justified but mm -hmm. why irs is above ifs you struggled in that part i think you can yes. recall that part of your interview so these are the areas otherwise ayan if you have any question you can ask before i disclose you the marks uh, sir uh, was the length of my answers fine sir or too long in some of the questions the answers were lengthy yes and why because you were creating a background before you were answering i felt you were still in the main mold you want to give a good introduction then you want to produce the body and then you want to conclude you will not get that much amount of opportunity dear in personality test yes. in personality test your best point should be the first point maybe there could be an interjection a supplementary question a counter question whatever maybe mm -hmm. the board member will speak over you will not allow you to speak yes so that's why keep this in mind that your best point should be the first point and should be precise you were also not listening to the questions properly like say for example the last question i asked you frame a quote for yourself that defines your personality you said the quote that i can recall at this moment is it means you are not sir, listening actually uh, sir i had uh, missed out the last uh, few questions the audio was not very clear sorry sir see i understand technological yes. glitches could happen but if you have misheard do not assume yes ask it's not your fault 
Do you understand yes. that? Suppose a senior officer is talking to you over the phone and there is some connection error. So you take any decision from your own mind? Guess. Yes, no, sir. Yes, 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 sir. You have to ask for clarification there. A civil servant yes, always asks for clarification. Then only you can take your decision. Got it? Mm-hmm. Anything yes. else, Ayan? Uh, no, sir. Otherwise, your performance was excellent. Today, the board has awarded you 185. But I, I think that you are a 200 plus candidate. And this was below par performance. Because your age, your academic background, everything is very solid and going in your favor. Over and above, your basics are correct. It means if somebody has flaw in communication, that is not something that can be rectified in such short period of time. So your basics are in place. You have to work only uh, or you have to make ornamental changes, yes. cosmetic changes to your personality. So that can be done. There is no basic flaw in your personality. You appear very vibrant. You appear very polite, very decent. And you look like a prospective officer. So everything is going in your favor, dear. Got it? But if I would have highly appreciated if this would have been an offline interaction. Because yes, sir. in that way, we can judge your uh, body language also properly. Here we are assuming, because I can only see a portion of your torso. That's yes, it. Yes. So I'm just assuming that everything is well placed and you are in decent shape. Okay. Yes. Thank you, Ayan. All the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much.